Welcome to another episode of Fitness Franchise Business Secrets. I'm your host, Forrest Walden, founder and CEO of Iron Tribe Fitness. Karen Broadwater, president of Iron Tribe Fitness. And today we want to talk about a topic that we're both passionate about. Okay. That I think we've learned to even grow more passionate about mm -hmm. the further we've gotten in the business and the more that we've scaled our business. And that's the importance of vision. That's the importance of core values. That's the importance of a brand mission statement and knowing, hey, what do we promise to deliver? How do we measure that? How do we live it out? Everything that goes into creating a culture that our people can thrive in. Yeah, I think I've gotten even more passionate about it. We coach other fitness businesses, help out through some masterminds and different groups. And whenever someone has this issue, I find myself going back to, well, what's your core values? or what's your vision, and they're focused on pricing or staff or issues or whatever. And I always find that without that foundation of a business, that's really where their problems start. And so I sound like a broken record when I'm asked to speech on, speak on stage or podcast or anything, because I'm like, what's your vision? What's your core values? It starts there foundationally. I just, I really don't believe any business can truly thrive with a good culture, a good business model, good clientele, high retention on all parts without this foundation for us to come back to. Yeah, and so we started 2010, and from the very beginning, we had a very clear purpose that has never changed, never. and that is we create fitness communities that change lives. So that is our guiding star, ultimate purpose that we're always chasing. We never actually arrived there. That'll be true in 10 years, 20 yep. years, 50 years, as long as we're blessed to be able to do this. We're going to chase our purpose. Um, I remember I sat down with a Harvard Business Review article on the importance of vision and core values, and I poured over that thing. In fact, I could probably put that in the show notes because it is an amazing resource. And then also read um, Jim Collins' book. He was James Collins back then. It was his first book. It was called Beyond Entrepreneurship. And in fact, he's now rewritten that book Just in phenomenal. 2020, so highly recommend Beyond, Entrepre on Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0. Um, and it will take everything that we're talking about today like to a textbook level, but it's it's phenomenal read. Uh, but ultimately, I wanted a purpose that I felt like would be a win-win-win. It wins for us at the top because when we build fitness communities that change lives, that means we're opening gyms that are thriving. For our staff, we know that they win by changing the customers' lives. And then for our customers, they're the ones that are getting their lives changed. So it wins at all levels. But then ultimately, even bigger than that, we do outreach outside of our four walls, whether it's our workout for water program, which has now raised over $5 million for our uh, nonprofit partner, Never Thirst, mm -hmm. or whether it's adopting families at Christmas. There's so many ways we think we live out that purpose beyond the four walls. And of course, what we do in the four walls, but even beyond it. Yes. So that's never changed. I set some core values pretty early, um, and I thought I was pretty much spot on with everything I set, but then when I had a leadership team, I brought all those to the leadership team, and we sat down and wordsmithed them and poured into them and established uh, what we have now. And so I would suggest that you spend some time as the owner, as the founder of your business, thinking through this, but I would suggest that you collaborate on what they, what these things actually are, purpose, vision. We're going to go through what these are, but purpose, vision, mission, uh, brand promise. Collaborate with the team and let them speak into it as well. Um, and I think I, I could tell you why that's important, but I think I'll defer to yeah. you. Talk about why it's important for the team to get to speak into that. Yeah, first I think it is important that I came into a company that already had them. So whether I had the ability to speak into the first ones or not, it was still the fact that they were important and they were great. I mean, there wasn't anything wrong with the core values. They were definitely helpful in understanding who we were and why we, why we came to work. But as the company evolves, which it will, and in fitness it evolves often, team involves often, leadership, purpose, all the things kind of just evolve that you really need to have some more concrete tools to hold the team accountable. We want to be able to say we proudly hire, fire, and we can make decisions off our core values versus just you are just this ethereal person of core values. We actually want them to be more concrete in the ability to say, if you need to make this decision, which core value helps you make that decision? And that's been integral into us really creating a culture of people who act like owners. Yeah, and I remember specifically when we started the conversation of rebuilding 
our core values. It was over COVID. Mm -hmm. um, you said, I really want some core values that have more teeth to mm -hmm. them that I can hold people accountable to. Yeah. Because, and this really goes back into one of our other episodes where we were talking about EOS and yep. traction and all that. Uh, but talk about how the core values helps us onboard the right people, mm -hmm. hold the right people accountable, and make sure that everyone in the organization is aligned mm -hmm. and living out this brand from the top down, yep. but from the bottom up. Like everybody is on the same page. Yeah. So we had a, a coach during COVID, and he helped us really see just different perspectives from other companies. And one that really stood out to us was Southwest. And they had their core values separated, which was how we show up because we want to be a whole person, right? Not just on a team. So separating the core values into how we show up and how we treat others because we believe team unity is huge. And so really taking the two and separating them as we want this person who's passionate, committed, and humble on one side as, as a human, and we have little bullet points that go with it. But then we also want to show that, to have them show up each day as a teammate through teamwork, integrity, and service. And again, that's something we go through in onboarding. So not even onboarding. Sorry, I bring it up in the interview process. That's very important. We try to hear key words of do they align with the who we are. Um, maybe not necessarily the teamwork. They haven't worked with us yet, but do they have the ability to? So it starts all the way from whether we're getting a franchise partner, a new team member, we integrate it into everything we do. We have hashtags on our Slack channel where we celebrate different core values. It's It definitely becomes something that of who we are, not just something that we say that's nice that, that we just put through the ringer. Um, just a quick example, because this happened three days ago. Uh, I went to one of our locations, did a workout before I left for the weekend, and as I was walking out of the gym, not even thinking about it, I stopped and pulled weeds that were right. <laughs> I, it just drives me crazy when weeds are right outside the building. You worked in the yard? Well, <laughs> not technically. Um, but one uh, of the coaches, when I stood up and I had a bunch of weeds in my hand, was standing behind me watching this whole thing and said, always modeling Johnny Bagger service. So one of the bullets under service is. is have Johnny Bagger service, yep. which is a whole nother story. It's a great story of a Down syndrome kid at a grocery store that was putting quotes in a bag and everybody wanted to go through his line. Um, so anyway, we kind of adopted and codified that story of mm -hmm. that's the type of service. So that core value we call out in each other. Yes. And uh, I was actually surprised he didn't have a phone taking a picture because that's the kind of stuff we send on Slack. It's like, All hey, let me show you what I just mm -hmm. caught Karen doing. She was dusting the rafters, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> um, but those are the type of things we want to celebrate yes. and make sure she said ethereal earlier, which just kind of means mystical. You know, you don't really, maybe was on the wall at one point, but nobody really knows we what work it is. hard, like... Yes. How we, do you measure that? We want to do things that we can measure and mm -hmm. celebrate and make sure it's living and active and permeates our culture mm -hmm. and not just something that the leadership team sat down at one point and scratched out on a pad and threw it on the wall and no one ever talks about it again. Right. So so you use it on onboarding, mm -hmm. interviews, interviews, um, onboarding through training and hiring and integrating them into the system. In fact, one yeah. of my favorite things to do at our quarterly meeting when all of our team is together is to pick the newest hire and ask them to list all of our core values. And I don't you know think we You know what my favorite part about that is? What's that? It's not that you ask, it's that our team is so unified, they go ahead and help the person behind your back so that they're, they, they're like, okay, he's gonna call on you. And so even that unity of fun, that they step up and really help them, they get note cards, they play, play it out. I love that that plays out our teamwork also. Well, see, I was sitting here thinking our onboarding process was <laughs> so is. amazing. That but... is, because our team is helping them onboard. But I do. I like calling on the newest person so and have them stand up and recite our core values. And um, you do give gift cards, so that makes it even I do give good gift cards. I just want to reinforce that. I want to know that I can walk into any location, to any position in the company, and they know what our purpose is, what our core values are, mm -hmm. what our brand promise is. And so all of those things help me as a CEO and founder to be able to, when I ask a customer, are we living out our brand promise? Like, I want to hear back from them. Some, now, will they even know what our brand promise is? Can they say or, no? But when they tell me what their experience mm -hmm. is at Iron Trap, ultimately I'm listening through the lens of this is what we promise to deliver. So um, at the end of the day, it's foundational 
to grow in your business, mm -hmm. especially if you want to scale. And that's really what this page and this podcast is all about, scaling your business, growing your dreams. And if you don't have that in place, you're not going to be able to attract the right talent. You're not going to be able to let that talent uh, develop and grow inside of your organization. And they won't know what you stand for. And as you go to scale, each location is going to look less like the first one. Um, and scaling is actually going to become a weakness and not a strength. That's a great point to make because I think in hiring to core values, we're able to scale we're in a people business, right? We can't just scale a product. So being able to really put people through a filter of our core values and make certain they're a fit, we could put them in Montana and know that that culture can still be the same because we're still hiring people that fit in that core value, which consistency and scalability is the hardest part of the people business. And I believe that this being our funnel and our filter is why we are successful in community and culture. And I think it's especially true in the service business and in the gym business, mm -hmm. even more true because our product at the end of the day is not our programming. It's not our equipment. It's not how great we teach the squat no. or our building. a one arm dumbbell snatch or any, I don't care how complicated the move is or the build out as good as our build outs look and as good as our branding is, our product is our people. Yes. And if we don't get our people right, we don't get anything right. Yeah. And so the biggest compliment I ever get is, of course, I don't know where you find such great people. Mm -hmm. And I said it in the show earlier when we were talking about Karen and I's vision integrators, like you have to build great people, but some of the things you'll never build is what, um, like we can't teach what their parents didn't. <laughs> you know, we, we have to start with people who are solid humans, but ultimately that share these core values. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's how we can turn someone who is totally in alignment with us. We can teach them the training and we have all that dialed in, but we've got to have someone who buys into those core values. And then we can deliver people who, when we talk about mm -hmm. passionate, mm -hmm. they're passionate about people. They're passionate about fitness. They're passionate about changing other people's lives. If they don't check those boxes for us, you can't teach that. You can't teach that and you won't thrive here no. because we've had plenty of coaches they're passionate about fitness, but they're not really passionate about people. They're passionate mm -hmm. about their own lifts. Mm -hmm. They're passionate about how they look in the mirror. They're passionate about mm -hmm. the sport of fitness. When ultimately what we want is someone who's more passionate about getting someone off the couch mm -hmm. and thriving in the program than they are about their own results. That's when we know we have a great coach. Yeah, every time that we get someone in, some it goes the opposite way. Some people love people more than they love fitness. And they get exhausted with using fitness as a tool. So it, it definitely goes both ways on both sides. But finding the right people, um, and then really onboarding and championing them really well through the core values, bringing them up throughout the process, making certain that we celebrate them, that other people call out their core attributes. And also that first 90 days says a lot. So if they're not living out core values, they're not really grasping anything, you just gotta make a change quick. I know that's not really this topic, but it'll show out over time. Even if you think your interview skills aren't great, they'll show, they can't hide their core values or lack thereof for 60, 90 days. And at that point, you gotta make a quick change because you also can't change their core values. They can't all of a sudden become the person you want them to become. So I think a lot of people get the need to have them. Mm -hmm. I think where this falls down in execution a lot of times is how do you truly measure these things, Yeah. right? It just seems like, I, you know, I want them to have these characteristics, mm -hmm. but like in a review, how would I actually come back and say, okay, we hired these things. We talked about them in onboarding. How are they be, being lived out? Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about get it, want it, have capacity? Yeah, actually on two levels. So we talked about traction in an earlier episode. And so there's um, three ways to rank someone. So get it, want it, and has the capacity to do it. So I could rank Forrest and his job. Does he get it? Meaning, does he totally understand what it is that he's doing? Does he understand why he's doing it? Does he understand the vision, mission, all of those things? Check, yes, great. Does he, um, what does it get it, want it? Does he want it? Does he even want the position he's in? Like if he was an integrator and we put him in a visionary role, 
that he doesn't want that role. So he's a visionary in a visionary role. He wants it. He wants the position. He wants to get on. And then capacity. So that's not just necessarily knowledge based. That's time based. That's let's say he was a dad and of three triplet newborns. Does he even have the time to invest in a visionary style role? So capacity. Um, just on books, what that looks like, time-wise, management, all the things. So he does have the capacity to do what he's doing right now. So those would be three positives. But how we integrate the core values into it, personally how we do it, I don't know that we were even taught this way to do it, but we send out a survey to our coaches to rank themselves on their core values. So they have to rank themselves one to five on core values, get it, want it, have capacity. And then they also rank us. So we're very transparent in they go through, we ranked each other. We, we are very, very open about how we rank each other. And then we sit down and say, do we agree or disagree? So we might sit down with a coach and there's an area, maybe they said, I'm passionate about fitness and we don't really agree. So we would have that conversation of what it is, how they could improve. And we do that at least once a year. Our managers try to do that every six months, maybe every three months for, for a new staff. But we integrate that in self-evaluation and then conversation around it. Yeah, and so that's where the stickiness is, right? Mm -hmm. That's where this stuff really gets lived out. And I kind of blew over this. I want to go back to 2020 because it was an unprecedented time. <laughs> Everybody's sick of that word at this point. But for fitness, I mean, we were we were shut down. Mm -hmm. Our class size was cut in half. And it was just, we weren't coming into the office. Mm -hmm. And there was all this time to reflect on, okay, this is hard. We don't know where we go from here. And we hired a coach. And we already had all these things in place, but we wanted someone to come down and like really pressure test us and make sure that, okay, this, we're very clear on where we are, where we're going, what we want. And so one of the exercises um, he gave for me to do that I found was very effective was called the five why exercise. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it's very simple. You wake up morning one and you write down in a journal, Evernote, whatever you use, what do I want and why do I want it? Both personally and professionally. And you kind of just write with the brakes off that first morning, you know, just, and then you put it away 24 hours later, you wake up morning two and you go back to it and you start editing and you wordsmith and you add some things and you delete some things. And ultimately you do that five mornings in a row. And in my case, I was praying over it. I was sharing it with my spouse. And so by the end of morning five, you've got a very clear roadmap of, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want personally. This is what I want professionally. And even more important, this is why I want those things. And so I use that in the depths of COVID to say, okay, we're not going to get out of the business. We're not going to go chase some shiny objects. We're going to double down. Mm -hmm. We're going to renovate our facilities. <laughs> why everybody, why, what better time we're shut down and <laughs> we've rent all our equipment out to our clients and uh, why everybody else is running for the hills, we're going to spend money. And so a lot of decisions came from clarity. Mm -hmm. And I think what, and, and then we went in and pressure test our core values yeah. and our purpose and got really serious. And so on one side, you've got this tactical with the team. On the other side, you've got this big vision of mm -hmm. everyone knowing I'm all in, I'm committed, and we're chasing some really big goals yes. and some really big dreams. So talk about, I mean, even from your role as president, I mean, you could do a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? At this point, the what you've built here, mm -hmm. the skills you've learned here, the number of people you've led, like you get recruited all the time, like you could do a lot of things, but ultimately, even for you, mm -hmm. and then I know for the people that you lead, having the vision of mm -hmm. who we are and where we're going to mm -hmm. keep people engaged, excited, and signing on in the first place. Yeah, I mean, for me, gosh, there's, that's such a loaded, that could be a whole nother podcast again. It's such a loaded question because there's just not, there's not another place for me at this point because I just, I've always seen the vision. I remember being in one location and you did such a good job even as just a one location owner you just knew it was going to be bigger. And I believed that. And I experienced it as a client first. And so experiencing the life change on the front end, I mean, I even remember being like, I mean, we could be like on like Coca-Cola bottles. Not that we'd be on Coca-Cola. But like, I just thought this is, this is going to be one of those huge brands. And that vision just has never left me. Even through the lowest of lows, I just believe this company is going to be huge. Partially you're at the, the front of it. I believe I've seen it in my own mind, like this company will grow. And I think the passion that our belief 
continue, like, you can't shake me. And like, I may have bad days, you have bad days, but you can't shake me of the ultimate belief of where this company is going. And so I don't think you can be around us and not believe in the company, which I think is unique. And passing that down to the, to our team members, investing in them, constantly pouring into them through the core values, constantly pouring through them into belief, keeping our team for a long time. Now they have just, I mean, we were in a team meeting just last week and one of our team members passionately, we were in an argument, she passionately was fighting against and for, and she was like, and I'm loyal to force and Karen, and th-. she was just going off because she's, she's worked here 10 years. She's seen the good and the bad, and she is all in, teeth in, in fact, remember when we we did core values, we ranked her as like, that's our poster child for yep. core values. She beat us on core values. Yeah. Um, and so creating this team, to your point, building up people around our core values and continuing to champion these style people duplicates these people. It duplicates the passion. It duplicates the loyalty and the belief and the hard work and the ethic that we really want to put out there. Now, I... I say that, and just real quickly, I also want to say we've done a really good job in the last, I would say, three years since the coaching and getting clear on this and even working to duplicate that in franchise locations now. I don't think we could have always said we we did that well, and I feel like they're all friends and family, and and we're all aligning in, in different areas since we really took this super serious. Absolutely. And how amazing is it when we gather at our annual conferences, yes. which we have on in just a couple of weeks, and everyone's dancing from the same sheet of music, whether it's a corporate yes. location or a franchise location, whether it's in Birmingham, Alabama, or Charleston, South Carolina, yep. we're aligned. And what ends up happening because of that is a customer will travel, and they'll go on vacation, and they'll drop in another gym, and they'll come back and say, it was the exact it's same so, experience, it's so fun. which is great. I mean, the branding is the same, the workout's the same, but what we're more interested in is how did they feel? Were they greeted? Were they championed? Hey guys, we've got a visitor from out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, all the little things that ultimately come out of who we are and what we want, I mean, our brand promise, um, that's the biggest compliment I can get is your people are amazing. And then my second favorite is when I travel, I felt like home. It was the exact same experience. Um, So if you're listening to this, you're probably in one of a couple camps. You might be sitting there going, man, I just opened and I've just been growing and I've never taken the time to set these core values. I don't know what our purpose is. I don't know what our brand promise is. My advice to you, if that's you, would be to start with uh, Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0. And it's a little thick. It's a little heavy. Uh, It's more like a textbook than it is like a novel for sure. But it will absolutely lead you through exactly how to think through these things for your company. Mm -hmm. Any other advice, podcasts, anybody that you would recommend there? I mean, I also think, and not necessarily resources, but don't go so far outside of yourself. You can't, if you're trying to come up with all these core values that sound good, they're just not going to be authentic at the end of the day. So, like, if Forrest came up with, I don't know, run wild and risk everything, like, that's not him. It's just not ever going to work. So I think also that inward work of what Forrest mentioned, your five whys, I bet when you finish that exercise, you could circle four or five words that mean something to you that could play out to be your core values that are more authentic than you trying to come up with the perfect ones. I think it's a great idea and a great point because if you're just word vomiting and, you know, it's going to mm-hmm. sound like bureaucratic corporate talk. Yes. And then like that doesn't really feel like who you we are. You can't multiply that. You can't. You can't. How, you just can't passionately do the ones that we have now. We can passionately implement because they are who we are too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, or you might be in the camp where I have these things and I did what you said. Like I just went through it and I put them on the wall, but no one in my company actually knows yes, them. We I don't, think that's the majority. Of people. That's probably the majority because I'm not. I doubt you're listening to this going, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> We should have a purpose, core values. I, I never, no, you, you know the importance of it, but probably you either haven't done it or you've done it poorly and yep. no one knows what they are. What would your recommendation be there? Uh, repeat it till you're tired of repeating it. Bring it up all the time, as often as possible. You should be having regular team meetings. Pick one core value that you talk about at the beginning of every team meeting. Just one. You don't have to talk about all of them. One each week. Just change it out. Um Definitely integrate it in your onboarding process heavily from day zero to day 90. It should just be almost a daily discussion. And then making certain that 
truly you're tired of it. Celebrate it, win it. We keep, I keep gift cards in my desk just so Force can walk out randomly and hand gift cards in team meetings, making certain that that's an integral part of who you are. So not just on the walls, not just on t-shirts, it's got to be in conversations. What is it? It's totally different now, but you have to hear something seven times. I'm sure it's 21 now um, before you actually remember it. We get called out on that before, but it just takes a long time before they remember it and believe it and believe that you believe it. So if it's just on a wall and you've never brought it up, there's no reason for them to believe in you. Yeah. About the time you're absolutely sick of saying it, they're hearing it. Right? We all and know this too. If you run a gym, it's into your clients too. If you tell them about a new t-shirt, a new t-shirt, a new t-shirt, and then one comes in, they're like, I didn't know you were selling that. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> and I actually will check in with Karen. I'm like, okay, quarterly meeting coming up. Do I need to run through core values again? And she's like, yes. yes. And so I mean, it's just a standard, you know, we have our coach con coming up where all our brand coaches come together in Birmingham to be trained for two days. We will talk about well, core values. We'll talk about purpose. We'll start that way. Yes. Like we're going to have a great two days and we're going to get in the weeds and we're going to talk about Ilio Soaz and uh, you know, all the cool things, but we're going to start with, why are we here? Mm -hmm. What do we do? What is this brand all about? Why are we not like another brand? Because yeah, so you can't say it enough. And then maybe you're in the camp of, you know, I've got them and I just don't feel like they're who we are mm -hmm. and you need to revisit them. And I think that resource would be great. I think the five Y exercise would be great. And uh, reach out to us because we've yeah. done it a few times and uh, we might have some thoughts as well. So this is a huge topic. We could go in all kinds of different ways, but ultimately you need a purpose. Why do you exist? You need core values. Who are you? The purpose is like, um, why? The core values are who? And then the mission is what? So you got to be clear about why you're doing it. You got to be clear about who you're doing it with and who you want to attract. Because if you're going to grow, you're only going to be as good as the people you attract. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. And then ultimately, what are you trying to accomplish? What's that star? What's that next mountain that you're looking to climb? And everybody knows this is where we're going. This is why I want to work here because it's not just working at a gym. Let's face it. One of our biggest obstacles we're against is mom and dad and in-laws looking at the your potential staff member as a personal trainer going, when are you going to get a real job? Yes. And our people can go back and say, my gosh, we're growing. This is where we're going. We got this huge BHAG in 2030 that we're chasing. And we convert those in-laws. We convert those mom and dads to not only do they have a real job, they love what they do. I'm kind of je jealous of what yes. they get to do every day. So all those things go into you being able to clearly articulate who you are, where you're going, and then get people excited and joining you in that journey. And then you'll start getting those compliments of how amazing your people are yeah. because they really are because mm -hmm. they are your people. Like mm -hmm. they kind of live and breathe and um, have the same ethos as you. So anything to say in closing? I think that ultimately one of our core values is service. And I think if we serve our team well, they'll serve their clients well. And so making certain that you have this foundation for success of vision, mission, purpose, values, all of the thing, and then you just serve them through that, at the end of the day, you can't help but have a good culture. Well said. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. We'll be dropping content in the page um, continually. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line.